everybody so good to have you on board this is Koyo Helen Apostle Koyo Helen coming to you from Nairobi Kenya on Trapeza TV we have a wonderful teaching prepared for you tonight we're teaching you on the needs of a man please invite all your friends invite your family so that you can understand how to meet the needs of the man in your life as well as the men around you this um, the scriptures and the things that I'll teach you will work for any man. They'll enable you to decode how to meet the, meet the needs of the men around you. I want to welcome you all to tonight's program. And I want to appreciate my husband, Apostle Joseph Helen, who's um, going to be joining us later in this broadcast, but already has sent a message saying he loves me and saying blessings and love to you, my precious Muski, as you minister. Love you so much, honey, and thank you for praying for me. So as you listen tonight, I want to teach you and I want to do it in the from a perspective of a woman, how to meet the needs of your man. And I want ladies to understand how to minister to their husbands, how to minister to fathers and brothers and colleagues in a way that meets their needs and enable them to operate fully. Many of the times people are so frustrated in relationships and many in marriages, sometimes people quarrel and fight over how to meet each other's needs. Men will say women are complicated. Women will say they don't understand the men. They think they're selfish. And men the same way will think they're selfish. But it's because we do not understand how to understand how to meet each other's needs how to speak in a way that ministers to a man how to meet the needs of a woman in a way that she understands in the beginning god made the male and female it is god who by design um, arranged that it should be so so there's nothing wrong with men and women in fact at the beginning when adam was all alone in the garden he was lonely and god said that he needed to make him a helpmate, a companion, and God created Eve. And when she came into the picture, Adam was complete. Our relationships are complete when men and women come together. And I'm going to teach you in the most simple way. Feel free to ask questions, feel free to comment. We'll be reading them and um, answering you in the simplest way, in a way that will make you understand, in a way that will enrich your life, in a way that will enrich your relationships. I want to declare that broken relationships will be restored. There is hope for your marriage. There is hope for your family. There is hope for you who is not yet married and looking to be married. We'll teach you um, codes that work. You know, when you go to the um, courts of law, there is a way you address the magistrate or the judge. There is language, there is a lingua in the court. And it's the same in almost every aspect of life. When you go to um, school, there's language that you use. When you go to address God in prayer, there is a way that he says um, you will pray and you'll receive answers. The Bible says that you do not get answers because you pray amiss. And when you pray amiss, um, you're not able to touch the heart of God. For example, crying to God. It does not say in the Bible that the fervent cry avails much. It says that the fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. You cannot go to God telling him that you're unworthy when he calls you righteous. The unworthy one does not get answers to prayer. It is that person who knows who they are, who knows the righteousness of Jesus, who knows the power in the blood of Jesus that gets answer to prayer because they approach God as his righteousness and their fervent prayer will avail much answer. So I want to teach you in the most simplest way how to connect with a man in your life. This is a topic my husband has taught before, but it's so important that we need to just keep teaching it and teaching it until you can get it. I've been married to my husband for the last 19 years. Uh, last December, we started our 20th year in marriage. Before that, we courted for six years. And we've grown and we've had a wonderful relationship. Not perfect, but we have been perfected by the word of God. And we continue to be perfected. We can't be your teachers because it is working for us. Our marriage works. We have a happy marriage. We have a happy family. And we can teach you the codes that will enable you to work to work out your marriage. God bless you so much. Welcome Daisy Quinga. 
it's such a pleasure to always have you. We love you so much and thank God for you. Franz Mwepe, good evening. Thank you so much um, for your comment that you look professional and presentable. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, we have such joy when we come to you every day. So what are the, uh, the needs of a man? You know, many ladies make a mistake in thinking that men and women are the same. You know, you think that if you like something, he'll like it. If you like going to a certain place, then he should like it too. And you, and many times people come into marriage with those concepts and those things, kind of things, the ignorance of how to deal with each other can make marriage difficult. Um, not knowing the roles. You know, sometimes in courtship, you find that the, uh, the man has been chasing the woman and there are roles and there are responsibilities that you take on, especially in marriage. And you cannot carry on with the way that you courted into marriage. And however, even in courtship, if you're well and instructed, you will begin to put things together. Now, sometimes people think that money is one of the most important things, but the interesting thing, it doesn't even show up in the four needs of a man, the four most important needs of a man. And the first and most important need of any man is respect. When a man hears, I love you, what it really means is I respect you. I honor you. I uphold your position. Um, when a woman hears she's loved, she, 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 when a woman is told she's loved, what she hears is she's desired, she's adorable, she's liked, she's, her companionship is desired. For a man, on the other hand, he needs to hear that he's upheld. His position is, um, his position of leadership in that relationship is, un, is unchallenged by especially the woman in his life. You cannot be the woman and be looking to lead your husband. You give him that leadership role and you call him wonderful names. You can tell him, I respect you, honey. I respect you. Um, whatever sweet name you choose to call him. You can call him my king just to show him that you honor him and honor that position of leadership. And it is the same wherever you are. Uh, whether it's with your father, whether it's with your brother, whether it's with a cousin or a colleague, the minute you, that you show honor and respect to a man, you meet his first and most important need. And if you were to show that kind of, um, you know, honor to your leader, for example, in an organization, you will definitely get favor. You will be lifted high. I remember um, after my husband taught me the needs of a man, I started to honor my father. That was... Um, some years back now he's in heaven but i started to honor my father and to tell him dad i respect you and i honor you and i can tell you that completely changed the kind of relationship i had with my father and in the last maybe six uh, five six years of his life was such a, a a different relationship between me and him as a daughter relating with him as a friend he asked for my opinion on things he asked for um what I thought, what I, um, what I wanted to do, it just took a different role. And in return, he began to say that he loved us. He began to show that he cared for us, words that we had not heard for most of our lives. So if you take that position, you meet the needs of your man. In especially marriage, which is the most important relationship, your husband wants to hear that you honor him, that you respect him, that you highly value his words. When he gives you, he tells you something to do, you know, when he tells you, honey, could you get me a glass of water? Then he wants to know that for you, that is your priority. Don't go fast to get the baby, feed the baby, and then finally, as you're carrying the baby and maybe um, picking up things on the way, then you bring him a glass of water. That doesn't show him that, you know, he's first and best. If he asks for something, make that your priority. Make his request and his words fast. And you'll be amazed at how he, in turn, will, will place you above all others. You know, it's so interesting that many men join politics because in politics they get to be called wonderful names you know in kenya for in swahili we say muheshimiwa or your on, um, honorable um honorable minister you know they get titles men usually look for positions and titles to because they believe that brings them respect but how much better it is if in your home as a wife you show your husband honor and respect and you tell it to him you say honey i respect you 
I respect your leadership role. Your words mean so much to me. When you tell me what to do, it works for me. Um, on many occasions, we've shared how um, my husband tells me, for example, in fact, this week on Monday, he was sharing how he'll tell me to go to a shop and he tells me, you know, we need equipment for our work, we're musicians. And he'll tell me, we need some new equipment. Why don't you go to a specific shop and he'll tell me, go pick up a keyboard, bass guitar, speakers. And without money, I go and many times I've, I've been asked, so, okay, so we're ready. What, how are you paying? I say, my husband just sent me and asked me to come and pay. And many times the, the owner will laugh and say, okay, have them. And later on, because of those, that favor, later on we pay and, com and finish, um, complete the payments. But you'll find that whether your husband is born again or not, if you will listen to his instructions, you will get such favor. There's a wonderful example in the book of Genesis, a, a situation that is all, almost tricky because Abraham and Sarah go to Egypt and a, um, Sarah causes a star. She's the most beautiful woman in the land of um, Egypt. And Abraham says, I might be killed because of Sarah. When they realize she's my wife, they might kill me. So Abraham tells Sarah, don't say you're my wife, say you're my sister. And it was a half truth because it's true that they shared um, a parent but in that um the relationship they were sharing at that point was that of a husband and wife but sarah honors the words of her husband and does not say um when the king and his people take her she doesn't say she's a wife she goes as a sister and you know god took it upon himself to make sure that sarah while in the king's uh, palace was not touched and she's returned to abraham and not only that as the, she's returned to abraham she's returned with so much wealth so many times women will not listen to what the husband says you know the, the question he will say oh that's not true that's a lie whatever and i'm not saying that we go ahead lying but there is wisdom when you listen to the man in your life even a, a man who's not born again can give you great wisdom. If you're under a leader in an organization, don't rise above him. Take his word seriously. And you'll just find that you have such favor um, when you honor your leader, when you show him respect. He in turn will make it his, um, he, he will make it his duty to lift you up. Many times women will cry that, oh, my husband ignores me. Oh, um, I'm not recognized but many times it's because you as a woman are not meeting his first and most important need which is that of respect god bless you so that's the first need of a man so uh welcome mike sikilima god bless you just trying to move my comment section yeah god bless you so much now having met the respect of a man um, in fact, let me, before I move from that, let's read the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And from verse 21, it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting means being under the words, being under the instructions. So the Bible begins by saying, Submitting yourselves one to another. Submission happens two ways. You, um, you receive the instructions of your husband, and do not rise above his leadership and under as one under that leadership then you also um, give instructions and he submits to your leadership that's how um, submission works it's two-way but leadership is never questioned then he continues to say in verse 22 wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord God is very specific submit yourself to your own husband because you can receive instructions and words from various men but the man that stands out in your life is your husband so re, um, submit to your own husband for example you have a pastor you have a leader in church you might have a leader in your organization or different kinds of people even your father is a leader but the man in the life of a woman that stands as the greatest leader is her husband. So his words come above all others. So wife, don't be um, insubordinate if your husband tells you, no, today spend time with me. Don't say, oh no, the pastor told us to be in church at 5.30. Please remember that the words of your husband come first. They come above the words of all other men. 
the words um, of that man, you need to honor them. When you honor your husband, even if you had such a desire to go for a lady's ministry or whatever it needs to be, once you honor him and place him in his place of authority, you will find it is him who will even tell you, honey, now you need to go for your women's meeting or you need to go for that intercession or you need to go and do A, B, C, D because you have honored him. He feels that he's leader in your life. Then he takes the leadership in your life to direct you in the right way. Verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So Christ is the head of the church, even as the husband is the head of the wife. Ladies, please remember that your husband is your head. When there is divine order in a family, you will be happiest. When there is divine order, even the spiritual realm um, arranges itself to, uh, to, um, to bless you. I think we have a, um, a teaching where it, that my husband taught a while back. And it says the divine order is Christ, then the husband, then the wife, and then the children. If that order is um, spoiled, then even in the spiritual realm, things don't happen as effectively for you. So wife, remember, your pastor is not your head. Your husband is your head. Verse 24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Hallelujah. It says, wife, be subject to your own husband in everything. Then it gives a wonderful instructions to the husband in verse 25. Husbands, love your, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it with a cleansing, with a washing of water, with a uh, washing of the water by the word. So it is the duty of the husband to cleanse his wife. It is the duty of the husband to love the wife, to nourish her, and to present her to Christ as a spotless bride. So you need to make it a wonderful experience for your husband to work, cleanse you. And if there is this kind of godly order in a family, I'm telling you, you will be enjoying heaven on earth because the, the divine order brings blessings. The divine order br brings peace and joy and everything that you've been looking for in relationships. So that's the first thing respect your husband tell him that you um you respect him by honoring him honoring his words and telling him that you respect him you can also call him wonderful names make sure you're praising him above all others when your husband um does uh, something even usual work just tell him honey i really appreciate the work you do looking after us the kind of leadership you give to us as a family your words are so precious to us when you say words like that to your husband you build him up and and he feels that he is the head of that home. And you also become an encouragement to him. Amen. So respect is first shown by actually, um, by actual speaking of this word, I respect you. Very few men would ignore that statement. Wonderful, precious ladies, I hope you can hear me. Very few men will ignore the words that I respect you. I'm telling you that touches the heart of a man. For those in relationship, listening to a man without interruption is a sign of respect. If you're having a wonderful conversation with your husband, give him close eye contact. And don't be distracted by the things around you, you know. Even if the TV is on or the children are talking or something is happening, try to as much as possible just concentrate on him and if there's an interruption that needs his attention be kind enough to say excuse me honey um, what you're telling me is very important but can i just respond to that because i don't want to miss a word of what you're saying and that's if it's uh, absolutely important however if the other things can wait please let them be secondary to him um give him eye contact give him your undivided attention let even your body language show that you are res responding to him you know don't let your eyes wander all over the room it's it's it, it speaks disrespect it tells him that what he's saying is not important and many times maybe he had such important things to tell you you find that his interest just dis diminishes and goes and a precious and special moment will have been ruined because of the wife not knowing how to deal with a man and then don't lecture or nag a man. 
you know don't belittle a man even if he's going wrong as a wife be wise about how you do that you do not need to you know nag him and tell him i told you to do this and this you never and then don't use words like you're never here for us you're never there you know don't use that word uh you um in, in, t in correcting your husband because that's accusative and anytime you do that the defenses will rise high up that man will not be listening to you he will work at defending himself so if you have um, the need to be with your husband it's just wonderful to tell you to tell him I love to be with you I'd love to just spend a bit more time with you honey I'm gonna cook early because tonight I just like to sit down and listen to you and Sometimes just let it be um, how he'd like to spend time. If he, if you've rec already expressed the need that you want to be with him and maybe he sits there just um, reading his newspaper or looking at the TV, just stay close to him. Stay near him. Let that, let that need um, that you have expressed be met by him. And you'll be amazed if you don't nag, if you don't argue, you'll find that it is his desire to meet your needs. And let me tell you an amazing thing. Men want to know what the women's needs are, especially the women in their life, the woman in their life. And sometimes men don't actually know what you need. You know, they're not mind readers. They can't interpret your, um, your desires. So it's a great thing if you can tell your husband what you need. Um, and you find that he'll be more than willing to do it for you. If you can tell him, honey, I'd really like you to bring us whatever it could be maybe to bring us some um, chicken maybe there's a place where he goes to and comes with some really nice chicken or some pork or whatever you like chocolate it could be chocolate it could be something for the home let your husband know your needs and let him also know how you feel it's a great thing when a woman becomes vulnerable to the man in her life Sometimes women feel afraid, something is scaring you, and you already know that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. But something could be frightening you. It's a great thing if you can be vulnerable enough to tell your husband, I feel afraid about A, B, C, D. Honey, please sort it out for me. You empower the man in your life to do things for you. When you ask him to do things, it becomes his number one desire to meet your needs. And... When you do so, um, he, he also feels so fulfilled because he's meeting your needs as you've asked them. Amen. Let me read some comments here. Franz Mwepe says, ladies are like kids. <laughs> they just don't listen even if you tell them many times. They change for, um, they change for a time being and get back to all the old selves. Only if they read a book and understand the word of God is the, uh, is where they will change. I'm open for discussion. Friends, when it comes to changing character, don't be um, tired of teaching. Just keep teaching it. Be patient. You know, Peter says, I will not tire in telling you these things. You might say, oh, but now you should know it. You're an adult. You know, the minute you start saying words like that, you already close up the ability of that person to learn. Instead, encourage them. Tell them, I know you can get this. Um, and then tell them, if you feel they're taking too long, it's okay to express that as well. But they're not necessarily like kids. However, they are under your leadership. So don't tire. Keep teaching. Keep growing. Even go to the um, different sites and learn about how to be a teacher because we keep developing. Some of the things that we're teaching you now are things that have taken us years to learn. But now we're, um, we've grasped it and we can teach it to you. And we can teach it to you patiently so that you get it, which is why though we taught this teaching sometime last year, we're doing it again so that you can be enriched to grow. So we are uh, friends, ladies are not necessarily like, like kids. If you do, if you say it like that, you, you close them, um, you close their ability to listen to you. They are students keep teaching be patient i'm telling you if there's a place that will develop your character it is in in um, close relationships especially marriage and family relationships because you need to be patient you need to forgive and constantly do so you might teach a lesson and then have to teach it again next week and again so don't be in a hurry and don't be impatient just keep doing it you're gonna be the one who will reap the benefits of those lessons hallelujah after all how long is education it's 18 years in most um 
systems just to go through primary and secondary before finishing your university you've, you've probably had already 18 years in school meaning that it's a process that takes time don't be impatient if you can wait 18 years for you to get um, a career in a certain field you can surely wait um, to see your spouse or your family member grow and become what God called them to be Amen. I hope I've answered you and we can continue with that discussion if you feel it's not answered. Mike Sikilima says, a woman is under the law of a man unless a man dies. Well, um, I, that is how the Old Testament puts it. The law that the New Testament gives us is the law of love. If you read uh, the, um, the book of Romans 8, it says that we are under the spirit of life. And the spirit of life is the spirit of Jesus, which is also the spirit of love. The commandments that Jesus gave us is love. Even that what he said, love one another, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The two, the most important teaching of the New Testament is love. So we're not necessarily under the law. We are under love. God bless you so much. As you experience love, as you experience what it is to be loved by Jesus Christ, to be loved according to the word of God, your life becomes fulfilling. Your relationships become meaningful. Amen. Honey, thank you so much. I appreciate and love you so much. Thank you for your wonderful comment. Uh, Mike Sikilima says, I'm grateful. Let's see. <laughs> I'm seeing it. Ellie Likuyani, you're doing well. Great approach to relationship needs. God bless you. And uh, Daisy Queen and Franz Guepe are laughing. <laughs> God bless you so much. Okay, thank you. Francis said you've understood. So, the first and most important need of a man is respect. The second most important need of a man is information. A man needs to know. He's just, he operates on what he knows. Um, and information, when it's deferred, can make a man quite upset. If a man doesn't know what's happening, it can make him very upset. So a man needs to know. And information is also as important as the person and the time you tell it. For example, if your husband comes home from work, um, as he enters the door, receive him, comfort him, encourage him, tell him it's good to be home. Don't meet him at the door with all the problems that have been happening in the day or the things that need to be addressed. If you do that straight away, you, um, you upset him and you make me, him feel like going back uh, out just to have some peace and quiet. If you welcome him and receive him and make him comfortable, then you can tell him, honey, there's some things that I'd like to share with you. Or whatever sweet name you call him, there's some things that I'd like to share with you. And Or, honey, there's some advice I need or there's some information I'd like to give you. Please advise me when, when it's good to talk. And many times your husband will tell you, go ahead and tell me. And then as a lady, don't tell a man there are things we need to talk about. And then say, we'll talk about it tomorrow. For a man, that straight at, at that point, he just goes to the negative things. He'll start to think of what is wrong. And he'll come up even with defenses, even against the person that he loves most. If there's a need, it's better just to speak about it as directly. You can tell your husband, Honey, I'd like us to discuss the fees for the children. Please give me advice. Honey, I'd like us to discuss um, a new house or a new move. In my career, there's something that's coming up. There's an opening coming up at the, uh, my job place. And I'd love to hear what your advice is. The minute you, you approach a man that way, he becomes more than eager to listen to you and to advise you, to tell you the way you should go. And there's nothing that um, that a man enjoys more than hearing what is happening, what is happening in the life of his, of his wife or the lady in his life and how she's feeling about things. As I told you earlier, he wants to know if you're happy, if you're unhappy, if there's something that troubles you, if there's something that worries you. Um, that ability to be vulnerable will make a man defend you. If you're always a person who is on high up there, you, you don't give your man an opportunity to minister to you. If you can say, honey, I, I feel frightened about A, B, C, D. Even as a Christian, he becomes, he'll start to tell you words like, don't fear, we can do this. We can 
you can approach this. So he'll tell you, honey, I've known you to be a conqueror. There's nothing that's too difficult for you. Go and face it. I know you can more than do it. Maybe you're facing exams and you just don't know how to arrange your time. You'll find that your husband will be more than eager. He'll tell you, you know what? Go rest now. I'd like to wake you up at midnight when you're fresh so you can study. He becomes the support that you need as a woman. And you too, as a wife, be willing to give him the information that he needs and be um, and be wise about the time that you choose to give him don't introduce topics if you're not ready to discuss them con conclusively however postponing important discussions tortures a man and makes him makes him wonder if something could be wrong you know so as much as possible give information if you've been with a man a whole day and you had um, a difficult thing to discuss with him he could even get upset that have you been carrying that the whole day and he wonders why am i the man in your life if you cannot discuss with me the things that are difficult for you if you're not sure about when to talk about it you can tell him um, you can introduce the topic and say i'm not sure honey what time would be best to discuss a b c d and now you have given him the opportunity to lead you. He'll probably tell you, um, that's an important topic. Let's first finish this assignment or let's first finish this and we can talk about it conclusively. Already his heart is open to hear you and to listen to you. You know, it's unfortunate that many times in relationships, people have so misunderstood each other. The person you love, the person you want to spend your life with becomes the person that you're also defending yourself against. When you do get to a place like that, I want you to know that there's a code that you're not getting. So you can ask for the help of angels. Angel Gabriel is a master communication communicator. You can pray and he'll give you advice. Or you can approach, even ask counselors who have the word of God or who are grown and ask, how can I approach my husband? How can I communicate A, B, C, D? Or as a husband, ask for help so that your relationships become beautiful. Marriage is beautiful. Relationships are wonderful. And God created for us to relate with each other. He created us to have fellowship with each other and, and to grow in marriage and in relationships. You find from the very beginning, God created a husband and a wife. You know, last week we were reading from the book of Joel. Uh, no, pardon me. From the book of Malachi. Let me just turn to that scripture. Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 last week when we we're teaching you about the giants and how to kill them and in verse 14 um, at this point God was rebuking some husband he says um, because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously yet she is your companion and the wife of of your covenant look at how God describes that God even takes um, he takes uh, he's watching to see how people treat each other in relationships how husbands treat their wives at this point he was upset with husbands because they had dealt treacherously with the wife of their youth and he says yet she is your companion a companion is a close um, a consort a wife that's what God calls a, a, a companion and you know what's amazing is that the Holy Spirit too is our companion so you can imagine how close that relationship is to God and the wife of your covenant God holds covenants very specially so please hold them the same way God is watching and he's ready he's given his word he's given us the Holy Spirit to lead us to guide us to help us so that our relationships are beautiful hallelujah God bless you this um, Let me get, read for you something. He, here's an example of a wrong way of handling information when dealing with a man. So the lady comes and says to her husband, I need some money. And the man asks, how much do you need? And the lady says, we need fuel for the car and the milk is finished and the water bill just came in and the plumber hasn't been paid. At that point, you've already irritated the man in your life. When he asks a question, because of the way men think in a straight line, just give him the amount. I need 3,000 shillings. I need $30. I need whatever amount. That, um, give a specific amount. Then you can come into the details later. Um, 
many times women feel they need to give the explanation but for a man it doesn't work like that for a man you need to give him direct answers and if he asks for the explanation then you can give him many times when you state i need um, 30 dollars or i need 300 dollars many of the times you'll say okay i'll give it to you and do you need it all now then you can answer his questions and and appropriately if he asks you what are the needs then you can break them down for him and maybe he'll tell you oh don't worry about the plumber um maybe i already paid him or we can pay him next week or don't worry about the bill you know and he'll just give you wisdom and advice on how to deal with things another example that can be very annoying to a man is when a man says a woman says we need to talk and the man asks about what and the woman says, I'll tell you later. Then the man will say, why do you introduce a matter if you're not willing to talk about it? As we said earlier, if you approach a man and you'd like to talk, you need to do, be ready to um, handle that issue conclusively. Unless you're asking him for his advice on when you can discuss a certain topic. Uh, many men get annoyed, get irritated at women and wonder why they're not giving them sufficient information or why the information is so scattered. Um, if you can sort out communication with your spouse, that will enable your relationship to be most rewarding. And um, I think this is the, one of the most important aspects. After respecting your man, give him the information, and information has to do with communication. And please, as we have always told you, if an area of your life is weak, please build it up. Read books on communication. Understand how to speak to a man. Please don't relate with him as your mother or your sisters. Relate with him as a man, and you'll be so fulfilled and rewarded when you do so. Um, sometimes, oh, another thing about um, communication is that many times, the times that a lady just wants to talk, and when that is the case, then you need to tell your husband or the man in your life, I just like to chat. And sometimes you start by describing how your day was, the things that you've gone through, and maybe you're describing what was happening in the office. And even when you have a question, because of the nature of women, when we talk, we find solutions. Men think through and matter and speak the solution but for women it's different women speak and as they speak they find the solution and many of the times a man might be wondering what's going on when he's not trained he might wonder this lady came telling me a story and at the end of it she says she's um she has the answers and it can actually be a bit of an an irritation to a man when he's not been trained but men please realize that women speak and as they speak they get answers and you might just be that listening here and as I told you earlier give eye contact give undivided attention make noises don't just listen you know sometimes some men will even close their eyes and look up and the woman wonders is he listening is he hearing me or he's on the newspaper and says you know yeah don't uh, don't uh, what is it? Don't deal with relationships as you're dealing with other issues. Give each other undivided attention. That's for both men and women. When you're listening to your woman, let her speak. And if she tells you, thank you, I found the solution, tell her, you know, honey, it's always such a pleasure to listen to you. It's always such a pleasure to, um, to be a part of your life, to participate with you. Wonderful. Daisy Quinga says, I'm learning so much about how to handle relationships ignorance away in 2021 hallelujah this is the year you will get married this is the year your relationships will grow this is the year your marriage will be so rewarding because you'll have the information and the codes that help you have a fulfilling marriage and relationship okay if there's any question you can answer you can send text it and i'll answer you hallelujah thank you Moema. we like that you're putting the comments on the screen that's beautiful Thank yeah, thank you. Okay, the third important thing in a relationship is food. Yeah? So eat together. You know, when people are beginning relationships, it's usually around food. You know, can we have coffee? Can we have lunch? Can we have dinner? And relationships are built around food. Um, and just like in spiritual matters, eating together causes hearts to bond 
in a way that is akin to a covenant. So when you eat together, you become close to each other. And it's so beautiful even when you feed each other. You know, sometimes when people are in love, they they eat from the same bowl, they drink from the same cup. And sometimes people think that's just for that season of their lives. Continue to do that. It just draws people so close together. You know, eat from each other's cups, share a meal. Um, if you've been married for a couple of years, go out. You know, my husband and I still have our beautiful times that we just say, you know what, let's just go and have coffee and sometimes we'll cancel a whole evening of work just to go and have coffee and laugh and have a good time we still date each other to date and it's just it's so rewarding and so wonderful don't think that you've been together too long to to do those special things and then um when a man asks uh, when a man asks to buy a woman coffee he's usually in actual sense saying that he wants to unite his heart with hers he wants to start developing a covenant with you and when you're read uh, when you're already in a relationship never despise eating together the arabs have something called a salt covenant when you eat with somebody who's close they say that you're eating each other's salt and it's so um beautiful that they say that when people come together in covenant of marriage or in a relationship their salts are mixed together and that relationship can only be severed or broken when every person can define um, remove their salt particles from the mixture so it says relationships are forever build your marriages to last forever the people from the east know the power of the salt covenant and may your relationships be um, enjoy salt covenants as well um, as we continue to discuss food i was reading a very beautiful scripture this afternoon from the book of judges chapter 4 and verse and uh, chapter 5 i was reading a story about um, deborah deborah was a prophetess in israel a mother in israel and during her reign um, the Canaanites had attacked them. There was a king called Jabin and he attacked the Israelites and Deborah was a prophet and the king There was a king who came to her and wanted her to defeat the battle But um, on one day Jabin who was the commander of the Canaanite army came to war against the Israelites and the war was harsh and um, the, the Canaanites were killed but Jabin ran away on foot and he ran and um, as he was passing the tents of Israel, there was a woman called Jael. And it's just so amazing when you read about Jael because um, Jael is uh, recognized as a Kenite. She was married to a man. I don't remember his name right now, but she was married to a man um, who was one of the ancestors of Moses', Moses father-in-law. But the amazing thing about this woman, Jael, is that she knew who was the she knew what was happening in israel even though she was home she was aware of the political situation there was civil war there was a battle happening and she knew that jabin was the commander and when jabin was running away she welcomes him into her house and says oh come jabin king and she takes him into her house and covers him under a mantle now um i can assure you that that woman did not use um, bold words. She didn't just say, where were Kuja? Oh, you there, come here. You know, she didn't use commanding words. She must have entreated him and said, oh, Jabin, you must be running away. Come, I can give you shelter in my home. And she took him into her home. And the Bible says that she covered him with a mantle in her house. And because it had been such a, a difficult day at war, Jabin asks Jael to give him water. And if you read that chapter, it says that Jael brought him milk in a lordly dish i just thought that is so amazing that even the way she served was was different it was not just the normal way of you know getting a glass of water and bringing it to a person who's visited she presented it she served it with um wonderful uh, um, utensils a lordly dish the bible says and she brought him milk and once he took that milk he fell into deep sleep he must have felt so comforted. Can you imagine a commander of the army? As war has been carrying on, he's gone into the cover, uh, into, under the covering of a woman and he's already so comforted that after taking her milk because of how uh, difficult the day had been, he fell asleep. And it even continues to say that after she had served him, she softly went to him 
and got the um, the temple of his head and she drove a nail through. She was a strong woman. For a woman to drive a nail once, she must have hit that nail once and she got to pin his head to the ground. She was a strong woman, but in that strength, she also knew how to be feminine. You need to be a strong woman, but you need to learn to be a woman. You need to bring out your femininity. Don't be harsh at home. Don't be um, rough. Don't be passive about being a woman. Don't be passive about being a man. Make sure you're bringing out your masculinity. When God says in the book of Genesis that he created the male and female, it was he defines that as something he created. It is your responsibility to learn how to be completely female. It's your responsibility to learn how to be completely male. Bring out your femininity. Jael served um, Jabin in, in uh, Sisera, sorry. She served, she served Sisera in a lordly dish. There was a way about her service. There was a way about her touch. There was a way about her words. Learn that language. Learn the feminine power that um, makes a man so attached to you. Be fully woman. We've been teaching you about dressing, about how your outlook should be. Those are the first things. When people see you and meet you the first time, the f they will judge you by what they see. Before they can design your spirit and your good character, they will judge you by what you see. And there is nothing wrong in being a strong woman. This woman just took a nail and hit it through uh, the head of Sisera once and killed him. She pinned him to the ground. So her strength was there. But she was also a woman whose uh, femininity was all out. She's, um, she, I think she's just a wonderful description of feminine power brought forth. Another wonderful example in the New Testament is a couple called Priscilla and Aquila. You find that Priscilla and Aquila were um, a couple that worked with Paul in the, in the gospel, in the preaching of the gospel. They were a couple that were able to take even apostles, the apostle called Apollos, Apollos who is described as mighty in, in the word and in deed. They were able to take him under their leadership. And every time in, in the book of Acts, when you read about them, Priscilla's name always comes before Apollos. They say Priscilla, sorry, not Apollos, but Aquila, Priscilla and Aquila. So it means she was more outstanding. So there's nothing wrong about a woman being outstanding or a feature, that, a person that is seen a lot or the one who has the words in a relationship. But make sure that power, that, that um, gift that you've been given when it comes to relationships, make sure that you are encouraging your husband as the head. Make sure that you're lifting him up. You're showing him respect. You're, you're giving him information and now you're serving him well. You know, you don't have to prepare food yourself. You don't have to be the one who cooks, but make sure you're the one who serves him. Make sure you're the one who brings it to him. And food is so beautiful because it causes blessings to come forth. In the book of Genesis um, 27, when um, Abraham, when Isaac was about to die, he told his son Esau to go out and get him um, some meat and bring it to him. And of course, you know the story. If you don't, please go to Genesis 27 and read it. When he brought the food, when Jacob um, was prepared and brought the food to his father, he said, sit, eat, sit up, my father, I pray, eat, that your soul may be glad and that you might bless me. There is a blessing in how you present food. There is a blessing in how you give it. You know, don't be rough. Don't just take food and throw it or just put it um, there. Um, let it be carried by words. When you serve a meal, you serve yourself. You say, honey, I prepared for you something really special. Here it is. Bon appetit. Enjoy it. And your husband will enjoy knowing that he's eating an extension. Even if that food had a lot of salt or maybe it's partly burnt, he knows that it's not just the food that he's he's received he's he's getting you you're part of that meal and you know what what will happen is he'll take that meal receive it and then he'll bless you hallelujah let me read some comments from here okay um francis mama please let apostle know when he arrives to check an inbox from me Okay, that's fine. He will check it we'll, and we'll give you some, um, some information. 
Um, Apostle Helen, my wonderful husband, says, Great work, Miss Tanzomo. They're enjoying reading the comments on the screen. My eyes are not always there, but I'm glad you guys can see the comments. Uh huh. Okay, fine. So um, um, I can see my husband, my precious husband, um, responding to Mr. Franz Wepe. God bless you. Oh, Rona Mwaka. Hello, Mama Koyo. We've missed you so much. It's so good to have you, Rona. It's good to see that your country has settled. The internet is back. It's always such a pleasure to have you. Now, Eli Likuyani says, Sasa, how are <laughs> He's written it in, in, in Swahili, a local language in Kenya. He says, I'll read it. Sasa, how are you? chakula. Nakuliza uliacha. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay, he's he's. I'm um, coming back to that. <laughs> God bless you, Ellie. That um. Now this one, if they bring the children and ask you, where is the meat? Kula uh, cabbage na useme asante. So he's complaining that some wives will bring them something that they don't like and maybe there's no meat in a, in a, maybe some of our african cultures a meal with meat is a big thing but maybe a woman brings vegetables for example cabbage and serves it to her husband and maybe serves it in a good way but um he, he doesn't enjoy that um i'm telling you the way it's served can make you enjoy anything when you know you're eating um from the woman's hand and what she has prepared she prepared with all the love even when you ask her to prepare meat you will enjoy it even more so god bless you so much now the last uh the last uh, need of a man is is sex and when my, most ladies sometimes might think that men are ever thinking about sex, the truth of the matter is that a man can only respect sex when it follows respect, information, and food. You know, now I'm talk, we're talking about sex within the context of marriage and not just copulation because that can happen with anyone. All that needs is organs, but that is not what God ordained it for. God ordained sex to be intimacy that is shared between a husband and a wife. And when it is given in the right context, it draws the couple close together. It it um it brings them to unity. It brings them to to um to a place of purpose. Wives, it is important that you acknowledge that this is a need of your husband. You know, don't come thinking, oh, I'm so I feel tired, or I feel a headache, or I don't feel like. Um, make the sacrifice for your husband and in the process you too will enjoy it and as we said there is growth even in the issue of sex sometimes people just don't have the information that they need on how it should happen in a marriage relationship for example um, sometimes it always happens when lights are off so um, you don't you don't give what a man what he needs to see you see a man operates a lot by his sight and sight um, might not be what a lady thinks so learn to give each other what you need even in the area of sexual relationship because it is so important and it brings a couple close together sex is not just for children god created it to be enjoyed in the unity of a marriage it was created to bring a couple close together it was created for the purpose of procreation which is also very important last week we are teaching you about the godly seed that is how god has ordained for the godly seed to come about when we taught you last week about giants, we taught you that the in, in the book of Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God so that the daughters of, of men were beautiful, the daughters of Adam, Adam were beautiful, and um, they, they married them, they, they had sexual relationship with them, and then they produced a seed that was ungodly, the seed of the giants, which God had to later destroy in the book of Genesis by the flood of Noah. God desires a godly seed in a marriage and wants children to be brought up by both father and mother. Amen. <laughs> my husband says, Lordly dish, you're speaking great wisdom, my love. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, remember to serve him in a lordly dish. Beautiful utensils, you know. Don't take that cup that is cracked or that, um, you know, or just something normal. When you serve your husband and you show him honor and respect, you'll even get some cutlery that's unique for him. You'll serve him in a way that's beautiful. You'll put some effort in making um, the, the food look nice and presentable. You know, it's 
it's um maybe some people just go to the kitchen maybe not even serve maybe serve it at the table and let the husband serve it's such great a great thing if you could serve your husband you know and make an effort for example if you're presenting fruits let them look good don't let that be done only in the restaurant and you don't have to do it you can ask someone to do it for you then you present it in a beautiful way sometimes put a rose flower sometimes put some nice um, serviettes or some nice beautiful cutlery some nice crockery make it presentable make him see that you're actually putting an effort in what you give to him and i'm telling you when you lift up your husband as a king in your life he too will lift you up as the queen in his life hallelujah god bless you so in the area of sex um even though men react faster to it because of the nature the the physical makeup of a man it is a thing that is necessary for both the woman and the man and it is a very important aspect of marriage if a couple learn how to meet each other need uh, each other's needs sexually they not only find enjoyment and fulfillment but they share a closeness that's, that's unique and beautiful hallelujah so if you have any questions or any responses Please text them to us. We are ready to share them with you. If you have any more things to say than that, we will be ready to, to share them with you. Tonight, I'd like to bring my children, Deroy and Miss Gab. I just want them to say hello to you. It's a family Wednesday. And um, I want you to see them. I don't think this year they've been on set. So I want them to come to me and we'll, they're going to greet you in a few minutes. Come, wonderful children. Come. That's Miss Gab right there. Hi, guys. That's the wrong. Okay, what would you like to tell them? Say, tell them your name and how old my you name are. Is, okay, my name is Miss Gab Tiaso Helen. Miss Gab Tiaso Helen. Say that again. My name is Miss Gab Miss Gab Tiaso Helen. Mm -hmm. And how old are you, Miss Gab? Five years. Five five years old. Wonderful. And I am Dara Texas Helen, and I am eight years old. Wonderful. So these wonderful people, they're full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom. We teach them wisdom. Would you like to, what would you like to share with people, with God's people? Hmm, let me think for a second. Oh, for all the children out there, when Speak you're playing, make sure that you use play wisdom so you don't injure yourself or hurt yourself or anything like that. We created that. Wisdom. You created that. You created play wisdom, yeah? Yeah. Yes. What other wisdom have you created? Hmm. And how about praying wisdom? How do you, How should yeah, children praise. pray? They should pray the proper way. <laughs> how is that? How do you pray? Mm, don't don't copy mm -hmm. the words because unless you're just gonna keep on doing that because that's not praying. Oh. You have to make different words. And how do you pray? How do we pray with you every evening? With different words. And how do, do you pray in, in, in tongues? Yes. You pray in tongues and then after that, Daddy leads you? Delivers us. Ah, and so we pray with tongues. They both speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. They've been speaking in tongues since they could talk. Yes. And after that, we lead them through prayer in English. They repeat after us. You can repeat prayer, sweet girl. <laughs> yeah, you can repeat. And then after that, we take them through deliverance. What did Daddy teach you about deliverance? That you don't have to be. That you don't have to be spunked. Spunked, exactly. Yeah. What did Daddy tell the Holy? What did the Holy Spirit tell Daddy? He told that that you shouldn't spunk your children. He should just deliver him. Exactly. Them. Wow. Yeah. That you don't have to spunk your children. You can just deliver, deliver them. them. Mm -hmm. Parents, please hear those precious words. Um, the reason people do bad things or wrong things is because of evil spirits. It's never too early to get your children delivered. We take our children through deliverance on a daily basis in the morning when they wake up and before they go to sleep. We, um, that way they're established in the godly um, in the in the word of God, they established in the word of God and established with godly habits. Evil spirits are the ones that make children lie. They're the ones that make children um, do terrible things. So get evil spirits out of the way. And you find you don't have to spank them. Children don't have to be rude. They don't have to be disobedient. They can be wonderful. Amen. 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 Do you have anything else oh, you'd like uh, to say? Yeah, I have. I have. Hey, mm -hmm. I have can I please? Okay, you can start. So. For all 
these children that are watching this right now yeah. does not learn to keep, keep, keep moving up the good work, but mm -hmm. be careful because uh, because sometimes you can get yourself injured and that's not ha and that's not even good for a kid. <laughs> but we already talked about play wisdom, yeah? Yeah. I so did. if you play with wisdom, then you don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, and, okay, what would you like to say, Dayro? I would like to speak about electronics wisdom. Oh, electronic wisdom. Elect mm -hmm. How to use electronics. The wisdom yeah. for using electronics. Okay, please sit and so they can see you clearly. Alright. So for all the friends out there, you shouldn't really take your child's phone away you and you don't really have to put passwords on them you can just teach them not to do bad things on the phone and uh yeah okay so they're always saying that um electronic wisdom you can give your children gadgets um phones and computers to use and you don't have to use passwords because when they're delivered then they don't want to go into wrong sites yeah yeah you don't have to use passwords. If you teach your children, they will hear you. The Bible says, teach a child in the way he should go and he shall not depart from it. So be engaged in the lives of your children. Um, be with them. Teach them how to use the electronics. Teach them how to use different devices. And after allowing them, trust them to use it. What do you do if you find something that you don't like on the internet? You should either show it to your parents mm -hmm. or just swipe away from it. Yes, yeah, so you can move away, or if you don't understand, ask your parents about it. And wonderful parents, there's nothing better than when your child comes to you to express that they saw something they don't like. Don't punish your child for telling you the truth. Um, be uh, Embrace them and, and help them. You know what's so amazing? I, I remember a few weeks back I came home, and my little daughter here, Miss Gap, came and told me, Mama, Today I just kept doing something wrong. I've, I've, I've just been doing a wrong thing. And I told her, come sweet child, come I'll take you to the bedroom. I'll pray for you and deliver you and you'll be fine. You know, she could trust that if something was going wrong, that I would help her rather than spank her. And it was so beautiful. I took her to the bedroom, prayed for her, delivered her, and she skipped away happy. And that problem was broken. So you have authority. Use that authority to bless your children. Use that authority to bless your spouses. And I declare you're blessed. May your relationships, your marriages, and your families be blessed. We love you so much and we care for you. See what Daddy is saying. Oh, our sweet babies. You're so cute. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Love <laughs> you. And then Haron and Mwaka saying, oh, bless you little angels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you so much. We, um, we bless you whatever time of the day. Have a wonderful day. Have a blessed evening wherever you are. And may the peace of God surpass um, all that you do. And may your relationships be fulfilling and beautiful. Have a blessed day and night. Bye. Bye. Say we love Bye. you. Bye. We love you. Tune in tomorrow.
Yeah. 